So gone are the days when Samsung used to dominate the budget and mission smartphone market. Chinese smartphones like Huawei, Oppo and others have closed in with very good and cheap smartphones and snap. Yeah, that's what happened. Well, Samsung tried to recover with the Samsung Galaxy NN2018 and A7 2018, but they were miserable. It was not good. But finally, the Galaxy M series phones are here, which is said to be competing against the likes of those Chinese companies. And the M actually stands for millennials, us. So I've been using the Galaxy M20 for a week now, and it's actually launching today in India, but I have no idea about its price. Well, let's take the price aside and take a early look at the Samsung Galaxy M20. First things first, the M20 looks nothing like previous Samsung smartphones and mostly it's because of this teardrop notch. It's the first time that Samsung has used a notch in a smartphone, but Samsung doesn't want to say that it is a notch. So much so, I looked for the hide the notch option under display settings, which most of the phones with a notch will have by default. But Samsung has an option called hide the camera, which does the same thing and it's under full screen app settings. Well, it's a little weird, but it doesn't matter. This thing looks very impressive from the front, kind of looks pretty premium as well. The side bezels are very minimum and the bottom tin is very small as well. It even goes head to head with the S10 Plus if we compare the bottom tin of both the phones side by side. Now talking about the back of this phone, it is a plastic build but you won't notice that at the first look. The back panel is curved seamlessly to the edges and it houses two rear cameras and this fingerprint sensor which works quite well, it is fast and consistent. Now I wouldn't say that this phone looks cheap at all from the back and if I have to compare it against the likes of some medium smartphones then I would say it can even rival the likes of Oppo F9. Like seriously, yes, it's that good. So we get a selfie camera on the notch and on bottom there's headphone jack, speaker and it's surprising but we get a USB Type-C port. Yes, it feels like that Samsung didn't want to compromise on anything with the smartphone. But of course they have had to because this smartphone is supposed to be ridiculously cheap and take on the likes of Xiaomi. Now there's a dual SIM slot as well with a dedicated microSD slot and moving back to the speaker, I felt that it was quite loud when I was watching videos but I didn't feel the same when I was playing games, especially PUBG. So except that build wise this phone looks good, feels good and I have nothing to complain about. Onto the display, it has a 6.29 inch display with a screen resolution of 1080 by 2340 with 409 dpi. Now of course, it's not an AMOLED panel, but still, the display quality is very nice, the color is good, no noticeable color shifts and it's bright enough for outdoors. So I've been very satisfied with the display while watching videos and even while gaming. It's not even an average LCD panel, I mean it's a very good one. So Samsung has gone with their own Exynos 7904 Octa processor with Mali G71 GPU on the M20. This one has 3GB of RAM, 32GB of internal storage, but there's another variant with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage as well. Performance wise, this phone does fine with opening apps and switching between multiple apps, but you might notice that the animations are not as smooth and you might notice slight lags as well, but it's not that bad. I mean, this phone is supposed to be a cheap phone, so I would say that its performance is good or it might be even better, but that will also depend on its price tag. Well, I ran two games on this, Asphalt 9 and PUBG. Asphalt 9 ran very smooth. I was actually surprised. There were no lags, no hiccups. But I cannot say same about the PUBG. The frame rate was way below what I would prefer, but it is impressive that there were no lags or very significant stutter. I would say this is a good performer. While the performance on this thing is pretty good, the best part of this phone is its huge 5000 mAh battery. It is absolutely godlike. I used this phone for 2 days straight and I was able to get 6 hours and 37 minutes of screen on time and I still had 5% left in the tank. Now of course this will take time to get fully charged. It took me like 2 hours and 30 minutes to charge from 5% to 100% and I was using my S9 Plus charger. But I guess this does not matter because you will need to charge this thing too often. Now talking about the software on this thing, it's running Android 8.1.0 and it is Experience UI but it is called Samsung Experience for Galaxy M. And there are some noticeable changes, the icons seem to be slightly different than usual and there are lots of bloatware pre-installed. And most of it is bundled inside this app called My Galaxy. The most noticeable changes is the lock screen storage. You get different infos on your lock screen and you can choose different categories that you want to follow. This thing has a face unlock as well, which I almost forgot to mention. It works well most of the times and I would say that it does pretty good job but it is not as fast as those Chinese ones. Now onto the camera, this one has a 13 megapixel Samsung sensor on the rear and a 8 megapixel sensor on the front. 
And since this is a budget phone, I was not expecting too much out of its camera. So I would say that the camera is fairly average on this thing. You can get some good photos in daylight, the pictures come off bright and look good. The wide angle pictures also look quite decent during daylight. But sometimes the picture appears soft, slightly dark and that's why do not look palatable as you can see in the samples. On to some portraits, sometimes it works well and sometimes it does not. In this picture, the edge detection is fairly good and on overall it looks decent. But in this next one, the hair has been blurred out as well and does not look quite impressive. Now during night times, the quality gets even worse. You can notice noise easily and there's not much detail as well. The wide angle suffers the most in night times, so you should definitely not catch the wide angle photos during night with this phone. Similar story with the front camera, there's not much details. The pictures look quite decent under good lighting but suffers under bright background and suffers heavily in night as you can see in the sample images. Now onto the videos, it can capture up to 1080p. The color and details seems to be fine but it lacks stabilization which is not a surprise. So we've come to the end of our review and as I said earlier, I've been using this phone for a week now and I have been pretty impressed. It has a good build, good display, satisfactory performance, average camera but a superb battery. It's like Samsung almost nailed everything with a smartphone but this will stand true only if the pricing is right. Well if the rumors are to be true, this phone might cost only 10k or 12k and for this price, I think this phone is pretty great, right? Well, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys liked it. And as always, like if you like it and also subscribe to our channel for further contents like this. And also hit that bell icon to get notifications. Well, until next time, namaste.